there are two main optimizations. One is called the bidirectional contract compression, and the other one is basically the ability to reuse the same filters when the same contract is reused. So the first feature is became available earlier on EX Leaps, and it's available on FX, FX2, FX P, and GX. And the second feature requires FX Leaps or newer for it to work. The configuration of either compression is done by just choosing one option, enable compression, full stop. ACI will figure out whether which hardware is underneath, and based on that, it will program it accordingly. If we can do both, it will do both. It can do only one of the two, it will just do one of the two. So you don't need to know which compression you're using. You just need to enable the feature, that's it. Let's take a look at the first optimization. It was introduced on EX Leaves, and the logic is very simple. Imagine that you have a classic contract to allow traffic from outside to a web server. Uh, you would configure a contract with the filter and the subject defined for bidirectional, meaning apply both direction and reverse filter ports, which is the default. And so the filter, so if you don't enable compression, the policy cam would have two entries, permit from any source to port 80 and permit from port 80 to any um, layer 4 port destination. This is to allow traffic to the server and from the server. If you enable compression, the optimization that ACI performs is to program only one entry, because if you think of it, all that the hardware needs to do is to look up this entry from two different directions for each direction of the traffic, and that's what it does. So assuming all contracts are bidirectional, then all of a sudden you get twice the capacity of the policy cam. This feature was introduced in 3.2, and it was enabled at the filter. I mean, if you use 3.2, it's still enabled at the filter level by using the option called no stats, which is meant to highlight the fact that statistics are not granular to the EPG to EPG pair when you're using this feature, and we'll talk about it more in a few seconds. Let's talk about the second optimization, and to, to understand it, let's first talk about what happens when the same contract is reused with first generation leaves or AX leaves or even with FX leaves, but without compression enabled. What happens is that if you have the same contract to allow port 80 from say web to outside or from app to outside, there's no optimization in place. Meaning each one of these EPG pairs and filters are, are programmed in the policy cam. So you have a you know, source EPG to destination EPG to allow port 80, and then source EPG to destination EPG allow port 80. There is no optimization that says both of these, these EPG pairs need to use the same exact uh, set of filters. So if you had not just port 80, but also port 443, then you would have four entries in total and not just two. And this is not even counting the fact that these entries are bidirectional too. So you're talking about for the example of port 80 only, the total entries would be four. And for the example with 80 and 443, we're talking about eight entries total, okay? So how about going from, let's say, four entries in the policy cam to just one entry, okay? How about programming the hardware so that both APG pairs use the same filter entry and both the direction of traffic use the same filter entry? So how to go from four total entries to one entry only programming the policy cam. Well, that's what this optimization is about. Enable policy compression was introduced in um, Photo. It works for FX leaves or newer, but this option is actually not just for the contract reuse feature. It's also to enable bidirectional optimizations also. Uh, so it's the same option was introduced to allow ACI to do everything it can to compress entries. So this option is enabled per filter, and let's focus on the new optimization was introduced with the FX leaf, which has to do with the contract reuse. With the contract reuse feature, ACI uses a table, uh, which is the policy group table, to store the EPG to EPG pairs and a label. And if multiple EPG pairs use the same set of filters, then they are just pointing to the same entry in the policy cam. So back to the previous example where there were uh, outside and web and then up and outside and so on, using the same port 80 or port 443 entry, 
then uh, with this feature, uh, there will be only one entry in the policy cam. And by the way, this entry is also used in both directions of the traffic. This is one of the two key functionalities that ACI provides in terms of compression. Now, for this feature to be utilized, you need to enable compression at the filter level, but you need to reuse the contract. So you need to reuse the same contract name. Again, even if it's enabled at the filter, you need to make sure multiple PG pairs use the same contract. But only one contract per EPG pair can be optimized. So in this example, imagine that you have EPG management to EPG2 that have a contract to allow management traffic. And the same contract is used also between management, EPG3, 4, and 5. If you have compression in place, then EPG management to EPG2, EPG management to EPG3, and so on and so forth, they all point to the same filter for management. Now, what if I also now want to configure optimization for the client traffic to EPG2, 3, and 4, and 5 to web servers on these EPGs? So all of these EPG client to EPG2, EPG client to EPG3, and so on, they all share the same filters from contract web. So if you add a contract now between EPG client and EPG3 with port SSH, can it be compressed? No, because there is a compression between EPG client to EPG3 and between EPG client and EPG5 for the contract web. So in other words, you can have EPG pairs with compression, but only one contract between any two EPG pairs can be compressed not more than one, okay? So that's a key point. Now let's talk about how the hardware is allocated when enabling compression. It, this is in the case that you have contracts being reused. The, on the left, you can see the hardware profiles. Okay, here is the policy cam allocation without any filter reuse. You could still have, for instance, uh, bidirectional contract optimizations, and this is still applying. So the policy cam will have 64K entries allocated for default profile, for the IPv4 scale, and for the high dual stack profile, and then a high LPM profile. So these are the policy cam allocation. But then what if you have at least one contract reused between EPG pairs? In this case, ACI allocates a policy group table for 40K EPG pairs. So EPG1 to EPG2 takes one entry, EPG2 to EPG3 takes another entry, and so on and so forth. And these entries will point to the policy cam where the filters are stored. And so the policy cam will be in this case 54K and not 64K. Why? Because this table here takes 10K entries. So it's 40K PG pairs, but it utilizes 10K entries of the policy cam where the filters are stored. So 54K entries are available either just for filters that are pointed to by, by the PG pairs or for the classic EPG to EPG and filter entries. So this is the allocation for other profiles. For instance, for the HDS profile, policy group table is pretty large. It's ATK entries, so ATK EPG pairs, which is a lot. Uh, and the filters can be stored in this table of 108K entries. And these are the profiles for the FX2 leaves and how the compression feature allocates the tables, okay? Now you can also check so you know where to check for the policy cam utilization uh, in the uh, operational tab capacity dashboard. But here you can also see how many labels have been allocated. Here labels is 0% of 0, 0 because there is no contrast configured with compression and reused. So there is no piece of policy cam allocated for this. But that's where you check the space utilization by EPG pairs. So let's calculate what, how much benefit uh, compression would give us both in terms of bidirectional optimization as well as with contra reuse. So in the case of bidirectional optimization only, uh, it's fairly easy to understand. So if you have 64K entries of policy cam programmed for filters that have the bidirectional compression feature enabled, this is equivalent to programming to, to policy cam without compression uh, having 128K entries. So you're basically doubling the capacity of the policy cam by using the bidirectional optimization. How about the contract reuse? In the case of a contract reuse, the worst case would be where two EPG pairs are using a contract, uh, all the other EPG pairs are not. So two EPG pairs sharing the same contract and using one filter, 
means that if this was not compressed, this would require two entries for the two PG pairs plus the 53,999 entries of the policy cam for EPG pairs without labeling direction, which means that it's equivalent to having programmed 108,000 entries in a policy cam without compression enabled. So you're still getting a big advantage over not using compression, but the main advantage is coming from the bidirectional optimization and not so much from the contract we use. But then let's look at the best case. Imagine that every single EPG pairs is using the same exact set of filters. And just for this estimation, but even if it's not a realistic case, if you imagine that all these EPG pairs reuse the same 54,000 filters, this is equivalent to having a policy cam capable of holding 4.32 billion entries. This is of course unrealistic, but you know, since we looked at the worst case scenario, let's also look at the theoretical best case scenario. So the policy cam reuse is indeed a very useful compression feature. Now, a summary table here for which hardware supports which options. So this is the list of leaves that can do bidirectional root compression whether it's ACI 3.2 or ACI 4.0 and later. The FX leaves instead uh, can do both bidirectional root compression already with 3.2, but then from 4.0, they can also do this policy table compression that we talked about. So what are the limitations? If you have an existing subject that didn't have compression enabled, it's not enough to just modify the filters. You need to remove the subject and, and configure it again. Only one contract per EPG pair can be compressed. Okay, so that's uh, what we discussed uh, a few slides ago. Remember about the statistics. So the individual filter statistics, the ones that are visible from the show policy manager CLI on the leaves are not available. I mean, they are available, but they're not accurate anymore. I mean, they're, they're counting statistics on the filter use, which is shared by multiple EPG pairs. So it's not meaningful anymore. Uh, so they're not supported in the end. A uh, contract can include both filters with compression enabled and filters without compression enabled. And this is completely compatible with compression. So you would have entries that have compression enabled, which are programmed in the policy group label table, and the other entries would be programmed individually in the regular policy cam table. So there's nothing uh, special about it. You can do a mix of a contract with some filters uh, with compression enabled and other not. Now, the contract that is reused, um, so you, you need to have the same contract with the same name and reused multiple times for compression to, to work. ACI is not going to look for the filter configuration and try to figure out which filters belong to equivalent contracts of different names. So you need to give the same name to the contracts, otherwise this doesn't work. Or in other words, you need to reuse the very same contract. You cannot expect ACI to compare contracts and do the optimization for you. Now the compression can be enabled for permit or permit plus log. It cannot be enabled for deny, for redirection, for copy, or for deny plus log. The other points are quite self-explanatory. You cannot use policy compression for VZ any contracts. Okay, that's another important limitation you need to know about. And that's all for policy compression.